Brandon Big B, thank you so much for being here today, man. I'm telling you what, uh, <laughs> we've been talking about this Obama amnesty speech last night, and now we find out today there's a whole litany of things that uh, he, in his executive order that, uh, that uh, these illegals will not be deported for, and they're horrendous. Yeah. You know, it's amazing, and I'm looking at that list. It's headlines on drugs right now, but drunk drivers, sex abusers, drug dealers, and gun offenders. Now, can I tell you exactly why three of those are not on the government's priority list to deport? Okay, tell us. Sex abusers, drug dealers, and gun offenders. Mm -hmm. What are the three things that the criminal rogue elements of our government, most especially the FBI and CIA, have been caught red-handed dealing in time after time after time. All three of those. Human sex trafficking, um, as well as what about the huge prostitution scandal that rocked uh, the Secret Service just a couple of years ago and now is doing the same to the FBI. Yep. And then drug dealing. And gun running. Uh, and gun running. And gun running, fast and furious. Yeah. Absolutely. And then think about the, uh, you, you know drug dealers. Listen, I, I mean, it has come out documented cases uh, that have been reported, buried in, in, in local newspapers around the country, um, that, that the CIA has made deals with these cartels to allow them to bring drugs in, to even bring them in for them in exchange for information on some of the smaller cartels. Right. That's a fact. I, you know, anybody can do the research and look that up. So why would you deport people? that are probably working for you. Right. <laughs> well, and if you're going to talk about deporting illegals, what if the man in the White House is an illegal? <laughs> and I mean, I mean, we've been dealing with this for years. There's a distinct possibility he's not even a legal citizen himself. Now, that's a whole other topic, but I mean, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's just unbelievable. But, you know, I, I hadn't seen that headline until I heard you read that list off earlier. Yeah. Uh, in the show, and I think it was like I think it was in the first segment, if it I'm was. not mistaken, the it first was. segment of the show today. And it just it, it was like somebody hit me with a baseball bat. I said, "Oh my gosh, yeah." I mean, I know exactly why they're not choosing those as as priorities to deport because those are the exact activities that the criminal elements of our government chooses to involve themselves in to bankroll themselves. Right, right, and, and it's documented. And and. and I was um, just going, uh, let me let me just back up ahead, what you're yeah, going to say very quickly. I'm just going to back up what you're saying. And, and folks, you can go to the headlines of Drudge. It's in the Washington Examiner. Let me just read you uh, the first couple sentences. The Department of Homeland Security has just released new policies for the apprehension, detention, and removal of un, un, undocumented immigrants. Now, remember that Obama just last night said, look, if you're here, you're here illegal, millions of you, uh, we're not going to mess with you. We're not going to mess with you. You, you know, we, 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 you, you can get work permits and go to work and uh, you're here. Okay? So, so he just thumbed his nose at the Constitution, broke the law, thumbed his nose at the law, the lawless one, and then releases, Department of Homeland Security says, uh, you know, here's our priorities. And right out of the Washington Examiner, it says the new priorities are striking. And it says, on the tough side, the president wants us to go after terrorists and felons, et cetera. Of course, of course. On the not-so-tough side, the new law says convicted drunk drivers, convicted sex abusers, convicted drug dealers, and convicted gun offenders are low-level priorities, Brandon. Yeah. Low-level priorities. It's unbelievable. But, again, like I said, listen, when you're known for dealing in those activities, uh, and for sponsoring those activities and supporting those activities. And why, why would that be a priority for you to try and rid this country of those activities? Yeah. If that's how you, you know, that's yeah. how you make your living. You, you so know, and I, I was it, just... it, it, it's unbelievable. This man, and listen, you know, think about this, because we know this is how the system works. So basically we were told that, that what happened last night is going to Give, and we're using this amnesty word loosely, but I'm going to continue to use it. That, that we're, it's, we're basically going to give amnesty to plus, uh, roughly 5 million people that are here already. Right. Here's the thing. If they're telling us 5 million, I will guarantee you that within 12 months we'll find out that the number is 10 times that. Oh, yeah. I, you, you know, you, you're right about that. And I'm just looking again at this Washington Examiner article, and what they're saying is what, what, what Obama's doing, these 5 million people, under what he's doing, his executive orders, they will be given work permits, social security numbers, 
and protection from deportation. But I like yeah. what Dr. Gray said in the last segment, and you, and you were listening to that, and we were talking about that. She said, but you know, if I were an illegal, I'd be terrified of this because I'm going to go get a work permit. I'm going to give them all my information. I'm going to get a Social Security number. And, okay, I've got protection under Obama, but the next president that comes in, now they know exactly where I live, exactly who I am, and how to find me. And yeah. I, I mean, you know, if you're an illegal, I mean, just put yourself in their position. It's pretty precarious, actually. Well, but the question is, you know, and I agree. I mean, if you have the, re- the, the capability to reason and think that through, but <laughs> do these people even know and understand that that's how, the, how, how yeah. executive orders and executive office work in the country? I know. I know. Probably not. Yeah. Most, so, most, but, most, but, most know, citizens I, don't. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's just unbelievable how he continues to trample on this, uh, you know, on this country and on this Constitution. But, you know, let, let, me flip, let me flip the script here just a second, because, you know, we've seen this, this rash of, of establishment Republicans come out today. Um, oh, we can't use this for impeachment. We can't use this for impeachment. We can't use this for impeachment. And the reason that they're giving is because that would then bolster Hillary's position in 2016, it would make the Republicans out to be the bad guys. My, my, my answer to that is anybody, Republican or Democrat, that's in the Congress or the Senate right now that does not, uh, that does not seek to impeach this man should immediately be tried for treason. Immediately. And here's why I say that. Do you know what the, def- the dictionary, Webster's Dictionary definition for treason is? The number, the, the one, uh, first definition when you look up the word treason is simply this, the betrayal of a trust. Thank you. That's the dictionary definition yeah. of treason. And so what's the, See, betray- when, when what's the betrayal? What's the betrayal of trust? I'm sorry? I said, what's the betrayal of trust? I mean, I know I'm agreeing with you, so tell yeah, the folks. When we elect these people and send them to D.C., they're sent there with our trust to do what their electorate would want done as a whole. And they raised their right hand and swore to God they would uphold the Constitution. The Constitution of this country. But you see, they're worried about their political agenda. Exactly. No different than Alan West was worried about um, his political agenda when you guys confronted him uh, uh, about Obama's identity and trying to get his help with that. These people are worried about their political agenda and not about the trust of the American people Thank and you. the trust of this country and the trust of the Constitution that they were sworn to uphold. Thank Every you. single one of them, and that includes Ted Cruz and Rand Paul, two men that I constantly stand up for because they stand up for this country. If they don't push for impeachment, they should all be tried for treason for the maximum penalty, and we all know what that is. Absolutely. and they Exactly. And they, they, they've they got to do the right thing. They've got to uphold the trust of their office. They've got to defend this Constitution, because if we let the Constitutional Republic just fall down and crumble around its ears, we will be a banana republic. I've got a 16-year-old grandson, folks, and I want my 16-year-old grandson to grow up in a constitutional republic, because what are the alternatives? What are the alternatives? Look at the nations of the world around us. Where else do you you want to live. Now, you might say, well, I'd like to live in Canada, for example. Look how wonderful. Oh, it's it's horrible. I mean, ask Mike Shoesmith. I was ask, going to say, ask, ask, Mike. Yeah. ask Dr. Grace and her husband. They came from Canada. They left Canada because it's so horrible. And you say, well, it's a nice, safe place. Well, you know why? They don't even have hardly a, a, a military. They hardly have a defense budget because the United because States, us. we That's defend right. them. So, That's right. I mean, think of the nations of the world that depend upon us to defend them. What if America, as we know it, goes away? Where do you want to live in this God-forsaken, sin-filled world in those dark days? Where do you want to live? Folks, yeah. I'm trying to preserve the Constitutional Republic. Well, and, and not only that, but quit giving me 2016 as an excuse, yeah. because if we don't do something now, yeah. then 2016 is going to be the least of our words. There may not I'm be a t- 2016. Because these next two years are going to be hell on earth, and that's if this guy actually leaves after two more years. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he, he's already said, listen, I can't do these things because that would make me an emperor, and I'm not an emperor. And then a few months later, he turns around and does the very things he said that if he did them, it would make him an emperor. So why should we be thinking that in two years from now he'll say, you know what, we're not having elections, I'm here? Yeah, it's his M.O. Larry Pinkney said it perfectly earlier, that Obama is the master of subterfuge and of double in yeah. other words, of lying and of lawlessness and of throwing truth to the 
ground. You know what? Let's take a time out. When we come back, let's talk about that lawlessness and how it connects back to Gruber and some of those re- latest revelations. Okay, Brandon? Let's go back to the phone because Brandon Big B is here. Um, Brandon, so uh, so talk about the lawless one and some, uh, some, some of the very latest on this Jonathan Gruber deal. You, you know, it's amazing. There's two points to be made here. Um, you know, of course, Jonathan Gruber, an MIT professor, um, one of the people that helped to write and frame and architect Obamacare, as well as Romney Care. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, to all of those people who have screamed for the last several years that how much better off the United States would have been if Mitt Romney had been president, and, and, and oh, my goodness, things would just be hunky-dory and lovely. Mitt Romney was nothing more than Barack Obama with white skin. That's yeah. why he's not in there, because a white man couldn't have gotten away with the stuff that that uh, Obama has, simply because of the color of his skin. If you think I'm crazy, ask Larry Pinkney the same question, right? and he'll tell you. But, you know, we have video of Mitt Romney praising Jonathan Gruber this week yeah. uh, in 2006, and this video has just restarted praising Gruber for his genius and, and helping to offer Romney care which basically we know was used as the framework of Obamacare. Right. Okay? But, so uh, this video surfaces of Gruber in his classroom uh, saying that uh, that the the, uh, stupidity of the American voter is the reason that there can't be transparency in politics. In other words, that that, that the American public is easily fooled. You just lie to them. Well, yes, you can. if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Your rates will go down. They certainly won't go up. All of these things that we know were now out and out lies about and, this Obamacare. Yeah. And people like um, you and me, we told people, while they were telling the lies, we told people, folks, they are lying to you. They are yeah. lying to you. And we were called racist and idiots and bigots, but now we were right. Yeah. So this video surfaces of Gruber, and basically he just admits everything. He just says, yeah, we had to lie to the American public. We had to tell them all this because there's no way you could have told everybody the truth and then this thing would have passed. You know, that would have been impossible. Right. So transparency in politics, or a lack of transparency in politics, he says, is a good thing. Right. So immediately the White House has to go into damage control, and this just blew me away. I'm listening to Obama, I'm listening to that demon inside of him speak, and he says that we really don't need to go back and debate the health care law because, and this is what he said, I kid you not, he says because every aspect of the law was debated in full in order for it to be passed. Oh, wow. That's what he said. What, wait, now, it what did Nancy... It immediately brought visions of that demonic wit. Thank you, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you. We have to pass the bill so that we can see what's in the bill. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) I remember you even sounded like her. That was scary. So which (laughs) one is? Yeah, I just channeled her. I know you did. You did. That that same (laughs) demon just went through you, man. (laughs) I mean, because while you were talking, I was thinking, if he said that, what did Nancy Pelosi say? So, so he called Pelosi a liar, or Pelosi called him a liar, and Gruber's calling them all liars and calling us stupid. Yeah, that's right. So the lawless one, the the man of lawlessness, the man who throws truth to the ground, the man from nowhere has done it again this week. He has lied to the American people on multiple fronts this week. He has spit in our faces. He has done exactly what we did not trust him to do when he was sent to D.C. And by the way, guys, the establishment Republicans that we just voted back into office and we have this huge victory now because we're in control of the Senate and let's throw parties and, 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 and confetti is falling from the heavens because the Republicans are in control, they aren't going to do a thing because they're scared to death of him. I, you know, and, and you and I have uh, commented on that before, and we're going to see. I'm holding out hope against hope and praying that somebody – will especially of this of this new group coming in but i am more of the mindset that you are more than likely they will do nothing i mean again grace brought up that even uh 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 help me the guy from texas uh cruz 
even yeah. Ted Cruz, the yeah. most staunch, conservative, outspoken congressman we have, is saying, well, what we need to do, we defund it, and we need to slap yeah. him on the wrist, and we need yeah. to censor him, and we need to... Th no! It's like Grace was screaming. No, we need to impeach him! We've That's got, right. Brandon, we've got 20 seconds. You have it. Yeah. Listen, and all this, you know, it sounds negative, and it is, and it's unfortunate. We have to talk about it, but listen, we have to remember that it's our job, it's the American people, to inform ourselves, to educate ourselves, to spread the word to others. It's our job as Christians in these last days to stand up and proclaim the truth like before, because people need to know, people want to know the truth. They want to know that there's a way out of all this madness, and there is, and it's Jesus Christ, and that's the way I'm going to end. Thank you. I appreciate it, ending it that way. And, folks, we're going to end by saying God bless you, and may God please bless America. We'll see you next Friday.